one of the questions that I get asked most often is about buying and using Mexican market pottery. I mean, this stuff is just really beautiful in a very relaxed and unself-conscious way. And when you go to Mexico and you go into the markets and you see it there, you just really want to buy it. It's inexpensive. Of course, it's fragile, so you always want to hand carry that on the plane coming home or put it in a place in your car that it's going to be really safe. This is all low-fired pottery, and people ask immediately about lead in the glaze. So I will just tell you, you should always assume that there's going to be lead in the glaze unless you are told otherwise. It's becoming much more common in market stalls in Mexico for vendors to tell you this is a lead-free glaze. I have two pieces in front of me. One is a lead-free glaze and one is not a lead-free glaze. And this is the way that I can tell them apart. You see how clear this, this glaze is here? It just has a shiny vibrancy to it. That's the lead glaze. This is the lead-free glaze and it has a slight milkiness to it. It never looks quite as vibrant as the ones with the lead in it. Now that's changing some these days. So you may go to Mexico and find some really beautifully vibrant glazes that are lead-free. Um, I will tell you that I work with all of these, lead or no lead in the glaze, um, all the time because I know what I'm doing and I want to share that with you so that you can know what you're doing too and you won't be afraid of using this except for like a fruit bowl or something like that. Number one, reach for them mostly as serving dishes because it takes time to leach lead out of the glaze. Secondly, if you're going to cook in them, and I love to cook in them, then I don't cook anything acidic in it because acid in whatever food it is that you're making will also leach out lead. So thyme and acid are the two things that you need to know about so that you can mitigate both of those things. And then just feel great confidence when you're using these beautiful pieces of market pottery that you have brought home. They're not only beautiful, but they will remind you of all of the wonderful people that you met along the way and the places that you visited. Now, when you do get it home and you want to use it for cooking, I will tell you there's a couple of steps that you need to probably go through. First of all, all market pottery that is intended for cooking will have an unglazed bottom on it. So both of these pieces are completely unglazed. If they're glazed on the bottom, they're only decorative and they will crack if you put them over the fire. The second the second thing is that this is low-fired earthenware and it will I mean, impart an earthy flavor to the foods that you put in there. That's one of the reasons people love to cook beans in an earthenware uh, pot because they know it's going to add something to the flavor of the beans and it's an enjoyable flavor. But to mitigate that, most people will tell you to fill this pot with water and then to boil it until almost all the water has boiled out of it. Um, and that will sort of mitigate some of that flavor. Sometimes people will tell you to take the unglazed part of this uh, of this cazuela, as they're called in Mexico, and rub it all with garlic. I don't know whether that just gives you another flavor or whether it really mitigates the flavor of the earthiness in it, but that is one of the things that people will tell you to do a lot. Um, but also feel free to ask the vendors what they would do to season the cazuela or sazonar la cazuela, um, because as I said, these are just wonderful pieces to bring home and to utilize in your own kitchen. Beauty, tastiness, a new way to cook, it's an exploration, it's an adventure. <music>